Join me as we explore on how technology inside this watch can help us achieve our health and fitness goals. Hi and welcome back to HFT by Jude Chua. I am so excited for this video because today, this will be our first video discussing technology in our health, fitness, and technology topics. Speaking of technology, this video is sponsored by Datalink Technologies Incorporated, your total quality computer shop for your digital lifestyle. So let's get the ball rolling. What we will be discussing in this video would be features of health watches and its significance to health and fitness. So I will just be touching on the features of health watches that we can use for our health and fitness journey. The two essential features that we need to find in a health watch for it to be able to help us achieve our goal in health and fitness. I will be discussing some advanced features that we may need for us to elevate and reach our goal in health and fitness. And third, some specialized features that sometimes we just want but not need. So let's dive into the technology inside health watches. So the two essential features that we need to look for in a health watch would be number one, if it has a pedometer, and number two, if it can measure heart rate. So pedometer, what is a pedometer? Basically, this is our step count. Pedometer measures the amount of step we do in a day or in a given time. How would the watch measure our step since it's in our wrist? It's not connected to our feet. So usually, if the watch senses that our arms are swinging, then it is approximating or it is assuming that we are walking. So the number of steps basically it's just like an interpolation or interpretation or a close approximation of the number of steps we make based on how much we swing our arms. And from that, the pedometer will give us the number of steps we've made in a given day. It will approximate the total number of calories we have burned given the number of steps we made in a day. So once you get hold of your health watch, which has a pedometer, usually the default value of the number of steps is 10,000. So you might be wondering, what is 10,000? Is this the default value of this gadget that every time you switch it on, it gives you 10,000? So 10,000 steps is a good approximation of an 8-kilometer walk. An 8-kilometer walk is equal to a 30-minute exercise. So a 30-minute daily exercise will satisfy CDC's requirement of 150-minute exercise in a week's time. So that is the reason why it says 10,000 steps. So you might be wondering, 10,000 steps, that's too much, especially if it's my first time to do walking, 10,000 is a lot of steps. I might be discouraged in achieving that goal. So as I've said, you do progress, not perfection. So if you cannot do 10, then just do 5,000 and then gradually increase. All you need to do is start taking the step. So the downside of a pedometer is it will not give you an accurate count of the number of calories you burn since it will just give you an approximation of the total number of calories you burn given the number of steps you make approximating the total distance that you made in a day's walk. So a pedometer is a good start if you want to jumpstart your health and fitness journey, but in the long run, it is not a good gauge if you are now computing the number of calories you burn. So if you go back to our previous videos on BMR, we need to really know the total amount of calories we burn for us to be able to achieve our fitness goal. Which leads me to the second essential feature of a health watch, which is heart rate. Heart rate is an accurate measurement on how much calories we burn because heart rate indicates the intensity of our exercise or it indicates the intensity of the work we've done. We have four heart rate zones. So we have our resting heart rate, we have our moderate heart rate, we have our target heart rate, and we have our maximum heart rate. 
So let me run through on the four zones of heart rate so you will be able to appreciate why we need to monitor our heart rate. Our first heart rate zone is our resting heart rate. So how do we get our resting heart rate? We rest for 5 to 10 minutes and then we take our heart rate. If you have your health watch, you just wear it and at your own convenience, look at the value after 10 minutes that you're resting, that is your resting heart rate. The normal value of a resting heart rate would be 60 to 100 beats per minute. But if you're an athlete, you can go as low as 40 beats per minute. So you take a piece of paper and write Write down your resting heart rate. We will be skipping the second and third heart rate zone because the only way to find out our second and third heart rate zone if we know the fourth heart rate zone. So the fourth heart rate zone is our maximum heart rate. How do we compute our maximum heart rate? The simplest and easiest way to compute our maximum heart rate is just 220 less our age. But this is not an accurate formula. As I've said from my previous videos, we really cannot do away with math if we want to achieve our health and fitness goals. So we will be using the most accurate formula in computing our maximum heart rate, which is 208 less 70% of our age. So I will give you an example on how to compute our maximum heart rate. So for the sake of easy computation, let's assume that I'm 50 years old. So we get 70% of 50, that's 35. We deduct 35 from 208 and we get 173. So for a 50 year old, the maximum heart rate would be 173. I invite you now to compute your maximum heart rate and write it down as your fourth zone of heart rate, which is your maximum heart rate. Rate. So if you've computed that, you now have your resting heart rate, which is your first zone, and you have your maximum heart rate, which is your fourth zone. So once you get your maximum heart rate, it would now be easy for us to compute our moderate heart rate and our target heart rate. So what is moderate heart rate? Moderate heart rate is 50% to 60% over our maximum heart rate. Our moderate heart rate zone is our heart rate when we want to warm up. So if you recall our 10 minute warm up and stretching, after doing that, you should be able to hit your moderate heart rate zone. Let's compute our moderate heart rate given our maximum heart rate that we computed earlier. Our maximum heart rate was 173, so we get 50% of that, we get 86.5. We round it up, it becomes 87. 60% 60 of 173 is 103.8. We round it up, it's 104. So if our maximum heart rate is 173, our moderate heart rate should range from 87 to 104 beats per minute. So yeah, it's your turn to compute for your maximum heart rate. So once you've computed your maximum heart rate, try doing the warm up and stretching exercise from the previous video. And after that, try to measure your heart rate. If it falls within the range of your moderate heart rate, it means that you're doing it right. So our third heart rate zone is our target heart rate zone. Target heart rate zone is 70 to 80% of our maximum heart rate. So again, let's do the math. 173 maximum heart rate, we get 70% of that. That's 121.1 and 80% of 173 is 138.4. We round it up, it becomes 139. My target heart rate zone, if I am 50 years old, would be 121 to 139 beats per minute. So what's the significance of these numbers? 70 to 80% of your maximum heart rate zone is what we call our fat burning heart rate. So if our objective is to do calorie deficit and to burn fats, we have to reach or we have to maintain this heart rate for a good 30 minutes, we are assured that fats would be burned. So these are the two essential features in a health watch that can greatly assist you in helping you achieve your health and fitness journey. Now, if you want to level up in using technology for you to be able to achieve your health and fitness goals, you can look for this one advanced feature that you can find in health watches. We call it an exercise-specific heart rate monitor. So what is an exercise-specific heart rate monitor? As we said earlier, if a pedometer is a good approximation on the number of calories we burn, heart rate is an accurate measurement on the intensity, on the type of workout, 
workout we do and thus also gives us an accurate measurement on the amount of calories we burn, exercise specific heart rate monitor is the most accurate of them all. Why? Because aside from heart rate, it also takes into consideration the type of exercise we are doing. So it also incorporates the different factors of the exercise like endurance, strength, stamina, flexibility, and all the other aspects of a given exercise which factors in why we are getting this type of heart rate. So it is the most accurate measurement of heart rate and thus the most accurate measurement on how much calories we are burning given a certain exercise at a given heart rate level. So you can see these different types of exercise specific heart rate monitor when you switch on your health watch and you see like indoor cycling, swimming, yoga, and so on and so forth. So aside from measuring our heart rate, it also takes into consideration the type of exercise we do and thus giving us the most accurate number of calories we burn given the specific exercise. So as technology improves and evolves, so does health watches. So we also have what we call specialized features found in health watches. We call it specialized features because it addresses a special kind of need for certain types of people. Usually, the specialized feature becomes a want for most and a need for some. And this is sometimes what makes it confusing if it is a need or a want. So that's the part of marketing. They're marketing their product very well. I would like to share with you two specialized features that you can find in the Apple Watch Series 6. But unfortunately, one of the feature is not yet active in the Philippines. So the specialized feature that is not enabled in the Philippines is the ECG function of the Apple Watch. So the ECG has been present since the Series 4 of the Apple Watch. So the Series 4, Series 5, and Series 6 all have ECG functionality, but it's just not active for use in the Philippines due to some government regulations about the usage of ECG. So once the government approves, then that feature will just be activated upon a software update from the iPhone or the Apple Watch and the ECG will work. So what is the importance of ECG? So what is ECG first? ECG stands for electrocardiogram. So it is a device that measures electrical impulses coming from the heart for us to be able to determine the different conditions of the heart. So it is good if you have an ECG monitor in your Apple Watch or in your health watches because once it detects an irregular electrical impulse coming from your heart, it can warn you and even give you an advice that you need to seek immediate medical help. So even if the ECG features of the Apple Watch is not yet available in the Philippines, I would just like to show you a sneak preview or a sneak peek on how it should be working. When you touch the crown, it will form a short circuit and all the electrodes of the ECG will now be active and it will start reading your heart's electrical impulses. So for 30 seconds, after 30 seconds, it will give you a report if you have a normal heart rate and after that, it will generate a report which looks something like this and you can easily email this to your cardiologist so that your cardiologist can read your ECG appropriately. So yeah, it's frustrating to know that this feature is not enabled here in the Philippines. I hope that our government will try to push the availability or the activation of ECG in Apple Watches, especially in this situation where most cardiologists would appreciate if their patients can just send their ECG records from their Apple Watch going straight to their clinic so that they can give the proper diagnosis or the proper analysis on the status of the patient. So ECG, yeah. The second specialized feature of the new Apple Series 6 watch is what we call the blood oxygen monitor. So some of you might be familiar with this device. So this is called a pulse oximeter. So what you do, you put in your finger inside the device and then it will slowly compute for your pulse and the level of oxygen in your blood. So now you can see that I have 99% oxygenated blood and my pulse is running at 60 
69 beats per minute. So the normal level of blood oxygen is between 95 to 100. However, if it falls below 95, then you might be having some medical condition that is responsible for reducing the amount of oxygen circulating in your body. So what do you usually feel when oxygen level in your blood goes down? First, you get shortness of breath. So you find it difficult breathing. Sometimes you have chest pain. Sometimes you get confused because there is less oxygen circulating in the brain. You get headache and you have a rapid heart beat compensating for the low level of oxygen circulating in your blood. So what are some medical conditions that needs continuous monitoring of oxygen concentration in the blood? So if you are a COPD patient, you have a chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, you have ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, you have asthma, you have collapsed lung, you are anemic, you have anemia, you have congenital heart defects or some heart diseases or maybe pulmonary embolism. These are some medical conditions that you need to monitor your oxygen level. But as I've said, since this is a specialized feature, some people think they need the feature when in fact they do not have that medical condition in the first place. At any rate, blood oxygen monitors, so you think of your pulse oximeter, you shrink it down and you put it inside your watch. So the Apple Watch 6 is also a blood oxygen monitoring device. So this will give you an indication or this will give you the status of how much oxygen is concentrated in your blood. So those are the different features of health watches and its significance to our health and fitness journey. So to conclude, I would just like to inform you that having a health watch will not guarantee you that you will be healthy and fit. These devices are just tools to help us make sound and appropriate decisions. So if it tells us that our heart rate is this much, then it's up to us if we really need to increase our heart rate or not. If it tells us that our calories burn is this much it's up to us if we want to increase or decrease it again it will depend on our health goal so all health monitoring devices these are just tools in assisting us to make appropriate and wise decisions and I hope you've learned the significance of using a health watch in your health and fitness journey so thank you for watching this video. I can't wait to see you in the next one. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you have not hit the bell notification, please hit the bell. So always remember to stay healthy, be fit, and keep safe. Bye.